and welcome to this edition of the Big Blue in the Bronx podcast on this Friday, October 16th. Alex Savage Porch back again. So I'm going to keep this more of a short podcast episode, uh, one, because of scheduling, number two, because, well, nothing's going on with the Yankees right now, and we're just previewing the matchup for the game against the Redskins, excuse me, the football team, because, you know, I got to start getting used to that. So I'm going to go through a couple things here, the stock up, stock down, what I do every week, I'm going to go through the stats. I'm going to go through three keys to win. I'm also going to go through the players to watch for. And I actually have like a cornerback matchup because both are good corners. And I'm real quickly probably going to make my keys to win. But let's go with stock up, stock down. Obviously, we played against the Dallas Cowboy last week. We lost 37-34, which was the most points our defense gave up this season but the most points our offense scored this season whether you want to take the seven away from the Kyler Fackrell interception it's the truth so let's go with stock up Kevin Zeitler and Will Hernandez uh as far as run blocking goes yeah good run blocking um a lot a lot of pole run blocking as well they did very good uh Will Hernandez is the third best guard in the NFL among uh going to the subject of run block win rate yes it doesn't always tell a story and you have to look at the film we know that but it's probably one of the more somewhat reliable um stats and whatnot if you're not putting it up against anything that doesn't support your narrative for instance like the nate solder pass block win rate same as tyron smith and jason peters meanwhile he gave up 11 sacks so uh that's a point to bring up Darius slayton he had 129 receiving yards on eight receptions last week, very good. Uh, he was one of the highest graded on Pro Football Focus as uh, for the Giants' offense this week. You know, they need to start rolling Jones out play action. You know, I think he was like four for six last week for either a, over 100 yards or something like 70 yards. And they need to do more of that. Jason Garrett needs to implement more of that. I'm using my school computer, by the way. Because I have the list and everything else on here. I think this also turns into a uh, tablet because uh, I believe this is a Chromebook. And, well, it's also touchscreen as well. But anyway, uh, James Bradbury held Amari Cooper to one reception and about eight yards. He had, I believe, two more receptions when other cornerbacks match up against him. Or whether he was in space, zone coverage, whatever. Uh, Daniel Jones, look, um, I'm getting this whole thing Oh. Uh, uh, Daniel Jones, he fumbled last week, missed throws. Yeah, I got it. But I believe he was better this week than he was against the Rams. I'm going to say that because you look at some of the throws, right? And people on Twitter, of course, Giants Twitter, were talking, oh, uh, Justin Herbert, you know, he was really good. We should have selected him. Look, uh, did Justin Herbert win the game with the bad offensive line? Did he make that play in overtime after the Saints scored the field goal? No, he didn't. So, what makes him better than Daniel Jones right now? Daniel Jones, he didn't go up to tie the game. Actually, no, the game was tied, so he didn't go up to win the game. Yeah, neither did Justin Herbert. It would have been of less recognition, or maybe a little more, because he would have tied the game if it was a field goal. But he didn't lead them down the field. Sorry, but, you know, I know a lot of you guys are still hanging on to him. Oh, the Herbert hype, uh, 2018, oh, enough. Um... I'm going to talk about Devonta Freeman, too, because a lot of people are starting to really piss me off with that. And, you know, stats may not back it up, but I don't care. I'm going to state my opinion on it. Kyler Fackrell, he has six tackles for a loss this season. He is tied for third in the league, I believe, or is third in the league in that stat. That is very good. And, you know, tackles for a loss, take it as a may. Yeah, it's a stat, but it's not often look upon, you know, whether it's sacks or, you know, run-stopping tackles or if it's a screen pass. Fackrell has a good eye, and he's worked out so far, but I just hope, you know, he works out this year, and maybe they sign uh, him to an extension or something, and he works out for the future, but we'll see where that goes. Tight end Evan Ingram, uh, he was more involved in the game, uh, I would say, you know, uh, last game more than, like, any other game that he's played in this season. You know, I'm not going to say he did perfect. I'm not going to say, oh, uh, you know, he was the best. I'm not going to say he was the worst. Look, the run blocking, I have to go back and watch. I have game pass now. But definitely with pass catching, you know, and, you know, even the running touchdown, that's an improvement. I think that's his first touchdown of the season, rushing or um, passing. But stock down, 
Uh, Julian Love, I'm going to say this, but he didn't play any defensive snaps last week. Why am I saying Julian Love stock down? I'm saying Julian Love stock down because he played no defensive snaps last week. Meanwhile, uh, that means Logan Ryan is now the free safety till Xavier McKinney shows up and Julian Love has fallen out of favor. And his play hasn't necessarily been the greatest. And I guess the Giants, you know, the defensive backs coach, um, what's his face? Um, Jerome Henderson, I guess he felt that Julian Love was not playing well, decided to bench him or, you know, at least improvise. Joe Judge and I he said, hey, you know, maybe he's not playing well. Put Ryan Moore in there. He fits. I mean, uh, if you look at his stats, and I was looking at it yesterday because I was about to do a uh, Last Word on Sports article. And, you know, I looked at his stats. He has like a 90 or an 86% completion percentage against him. Now, I'm not saying all of his bad stats come in coverage. It's also a run, you know, stopping the run. Um, but if you look, he's already given up over 100 yards or close to it. And that's, you know, he's given up more yards in five games, or really four. You know, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, in four games, he's had over half of the yards he gave up last year. You know, go on Pro Football Reference, look that up. Uh, I might pull it up here, but, you know, for right now, I'm just going to tell you guys the stats. Ryan Lewis, he did not play well last week. I'm going to actually take a look at his stats right now uh, real quickly. He did not play well last week. Um, let's see, i got to connect to Wi-Fi while this does it, but I'm going to explain the others. Uh a lot of people were disappointed in Leonard Williams. I, you know, I'm not going to make any sort of uh, assumption there because I don't know. But uh, that's mainly my improvisation upon the stock up, stock down. Uh, there's going to be a lot to discuss, but let's go to stats. Washington football team, their offense uh, in total yards ranks 31st. They have 1,315 on the season, 263 per game. Rushing yards, they are 28th, 908. 181.6 per game. They're 30th in rushing yards, 407 total, but 81.4 for game. Uh, a lot of people are excited about Antonio Gibson. We'll see what happens on Sunday if he makes the Giants look like the worst defense in the league or makes the Giants look like the best defense in the league. We're supposed to be stopping the run, and we're not doing it. Points are 29th, 89 total points this season, 17.8 per game. Now let's take a look at the defense, which is slightly a little better. And everybody was talking, you know, this season, all oh, Jack Del Rio, you know, he's a genius. He's a genius. But, you know, the stats aren't showing right now that they are where they're supposed to be at. Now, their offense completely sucks. And I'm going to say it right now, any Washington football fan, you know, wants to come after me, oh, your team sucks. So, you know what? Um, they have no weapons on offense. I'm going to say that right now. You know, you guys can disagree. But the defense, look at the pieces they have. They have Deron Payne. They have Chase Young. And I'm going to get to that in a minute because they've proven a lot this season so far. I'm going to get to that because I actually recorded, you know, how many pressures, how many hurries, uh, how many sacks. Um, But you look at the defense. They have, you know, one of the best defensive lines in football. But the secondary hasn't been playing to the tune of the defense. And it's sort of like our situation in the secondary because you have Kendall Fuller, who's been one of the best corners in the league this year. And, you know, Bradbury, the same thing for us. But the two-corner, you know, some of the safeties haven't been playing well. So it's going to be really interesting to see what this defense does on Sunday. But it's not evenly matched like it was last week where you had a good defense and a good offense. And then you had a poor defense against a poor offense. No, you're going to have both good defenses and, you know, or at least average defenses. And you're going to have offenses who barely score points. So for the total defense and the total yards... They rank 17th, 1,786 given up, 356.4 given up per game. Passing yards, they're 13th, 1,134 given up, total 226.8 per game. Rushing yards, they're 24th, 648, 129.6 per game. And then you look at the points, 23rd, 142, and then 28.4 per game, which isn't necessarily the greatest. Now, you look at the Giants' offense, uh, offense that fails to score points a lot. Total yards are 28th, 1,412 uh, total this season, 282.4 per game. Passing yards are 23rd, 1,017, giving up the season 203.4 per game, which honestly, um, you know, obviously I said they're 23rd um, 
from a defensive standpoint, that looks good, but on an offensive standpoint, it does not look good. Because, you know, oh, we're supposed to have Golden Tate and Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram and Darius Slayton. Well, obviously, some players are injured and some players are not proving. Uh, Golden Tate, he's another one I got to go back to. Um, but he would have been on my stock down, and he should be. He is now because I'm making it clear. But, you know, he's been a fair disappointment this season. You know, he's a big yak yards after catch guy. He hasn't gotten a lot. I think it's like uh, average 2.6 per reception. I don't know. I have to look at the stats. I'm not going to, you know, give any narratives right now. But uh, for passing yards, I went over. Rushing yards, they're 31st, 395 total, 79 per game. And then points are 31st, only in front of, I believe, the New York Jets. 81 points total and 16.2 per game obviously some of these rankings might be a little messed up because you have the titans who didn't play uh five weeks yet because of the covid uh you also have the broncos and patriots they didn't play uh a total a total five games yet so you have to look at that as well uh for the defense that's done better than the offense they're a middle of the pack as really not expected because you know a lot of people saying oh the defense is gonna be so bad this year well it hasn't done a lot bad the only games that I was really uh, not impressed with them was probably week three and then last week a little bit. But obviously, impact plays are there. It's like a Madden game. Defense, total yards, they're 13th, 1,715. Giving up total this season, 343 per game. Passing yards, they're 17th, 1,162. Giving up, 232.4 per game. Rushing yards, they're 16th, 553, 110.6 giving up per game. And also you got the points, 19th, 133, but 26.6 per game. So that's a common, you know, thing to make. But if I were to judge, now this is only based off of stats. Don't say, oh, you know, the impact players, oh, you're not counting Chase Young and all of them. By stats, it looks like the Giants have a better defense. But talent-wise, the Redskins, or is the football team, has a better defense. I can't stop saying that. Players to watch out for. Uh, Antonio Gibson... I don't have his stats right now, but, you know, is he someone to watch out for? Is he, you know, I don't know much about him, I'm going to be honest. I think they drafted him in, I believe, the second round or the third round. But, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, he's their running back. We haven't stopped the run. Uh, we didn't last week. So that's going to be interesting. Chase Young. Two and a half sacks a season, five pressures, two hurries. He missed the game, but very good stats on his end. Jonathan Allen, uh, one and a half sacks, four pressures, and two hurries. Ryan Kerrigan, two sacks, four pressures, two hurries. Uh, they all have two hurries, but not to this point. Montez Sweat, three and a, three sacks total, three uh, three hurries, nine pressures, three quarterback knockdowns. You have Deron Payne, who has. Half a sack, five pressures, three hurries. So Montez Sweat, he seems like, you know, somebody that we actually have to watch out for. I'm not saying, you know, the whole defensive line disregard. But I believe that Montez Sweat is definitely better this season than he was last season. Now, I'm going to go back to the cornerback matchup because I was about to bring up Kendall Fuller. And then after that, I'm going to do my keys to the game. So Kendall Fuller, uh, 6 for 11. Now, I'm talking, you know, when the stats are where the stats are, how many times he's targeted, that stuff. So he, he was targeted 11 times, and he allowed six completions, 95 yards, three interceptions, 74.2 passer rating against, 54.5 completion percentage against. Uh, he allows 15.8 yards per completion, which is very high, or at least high, at least. Uh, 8.6 yards per target, and one touchdown. You look at James Bradbury who has a similar PFF grade, but I'm not going by that. James Bradbury, 17 for 30, which means he was targeted 30 times, 17 completions made against him, 214 yards, one interception on the season, 87.4 passer rating against him, 56.7 completion percentage against him, and you also have the stats that coming down. He's given up two touchdowns according to Pro Football Reference. To be honest with you, I really don't remember... Um, Two touchdowns. I remember one, which obviously was in the opener against the Steelers. We gave up a touchdown to Judas Smith Schuster late. Uh, also, 12.6 yards per completion, 7.1 per target. So, for interceptions, obviously, Kendall Fuller's is better. Uh, completion percentage and passer rating, Kendall, Kendall Fuller's is better. Three interceptions, Kendall Fuller's is better. 85 yards, Kendall Fuller's is better. Now, I don't know if he played a full five games because I could have sworn he was injured at some point, but I'm not going to say anything that I don't know. Uh, 95 yards given up, he's better. 
But you take a look. Also, uh, touchdowns, they're tied. But then again, I don't know where that second touchdown came from for James Bradbury. Um, also, for completions and targets, James Bradbury has allowed less yards per completion and less yards per target. So that's where uh, it's a bite in the ass for Kendall Fuller if you're matching up against James Bradbury, you know, stats-wise. But it's going to be real interesting this week. I don't know if Ronald Darby's going to be active. I have to check their injury report. Uh, I know Darius Slayton yesterday was limited along with Kyler Fackrell, Jabot Peppers again. And there was one more person. I don't know their name, uh, or at least I forget it at the moment. But let's go with three keys to win. Number one, uh, you need to find a way to win and stop screwing up. Now, I know that's like, you know, a lot of words and it's not straightforward. But you look at all the games we've played this season. You know, this is our easiest opponent, I would say by far, maybe. I mean, the 49ers, you know, they were a little decked out when we versed them. We got our ass beat. 36-9. to nine. And also the Bears, you know, they weren't... I wouldn't say they were tough. I wouldn't say they were easy either. So it's kind of like in the middle thing. But, you know, you look at the how many games we played this season. Let's see. One, two, three. Four were competitive. Four were competitive. You could say the 49ers game too, because it was like 16-9 to 9, uh, at one point, and I think they scored 20 unanswered points, something like that. You know, it was competitive in the beginning, and then it totally dropped out. That's the problem with the Giants. You know, you don't play full four quarters. They play two. But the Pittsburgh game was competitive till the bitter end. Uh, also, to note that the Chicago game was like that. It wasn't competitive in the beginning, but at the near end, it was competitive. 49ers game, you know, you could say a little bit at the beginning. Uh, the Rams game, competitive at the end. And the Cowboys game, I would say competitive more in the beginning. But the Giants tried fighting their way back. So that's number one. Number two, you got to stop the pass rush. I mean, this is a no-brainer for anyone who watches football. you got to stop that pass rush. Look, I may have mentioned this before. I don't know if I have. But if I did, I'll mention it again. The back end of that defense isn't very good. Kendall Fuller, yes, he's, you know, good. And also, you got to factor in Landon Collins as well. I don't know what stats he's putting up, so I don't know. And I'm not going to make any, you know, assumptions. But you have to watch for that front four and stop the pass rush. Chase Young, Jonathan Allen, Ryan Kerrigan, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne. Each one of those guys has a sack so far. And I don't know, you know, if he does a multiple 4-3, uh, What's his face? Jack Del Rio or relies on one pass rusher? Because it clearly says that they don't. I mean, they could or they couldn't, depending on what situation you put him in. Because, like, Chase Young, he's, you know, a number one pass rusher. Montez Sweat, he could grow to be one. Ryan Kerrigan, he was one at some point in his career. And, you know, he started slowing down a little bit, but he still puts up the numbers. So, you know, Andrew Thomas allowed 28 pressures for the first five games. That's most in the NFL among tackles, and that's also more than six teams with their offensive lines combined. It's not good. It really isn't. But, you know, hopefully he just improves this week. You know, everyone was bragging for the season. Oh, Andrew Thomas, you know, look at the tape um, in that one practice against Chase Young. Yeah, it's, you know, that's not NFL. We'll see how Chase Young adapts to the NFL, and we'll see how Andrew Thomas adapts to the NFL. Uh, number three, start running the football more and better. I say this every single time, and it's redundant because we don't get it done. We didn't have 100 yards rushing last week. You know, I think Freeman was a lead rusher. I don't have the stats on me right now, but we had only like 89 rushing yards. Zeke individually had more rushing yards. That's depressing against the 31st rush defense in the league, Dallas Cowboys. So... You know, let's find a hole, everybody, because let's take a look at the stats here. The rushing yards, they're 24th, and passing yards, they're 13th, if I'm looking at this correctly. Yeah. So, you know, attack the run. And, you know, at least, you know, Devonta Freeman, he's showing a lot of good stuff. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Wayne Gallman, he's still got some power. So you're going to be really relying on those two guys to get you the rushing yards. You're not just going to rely on Freeman, even though he looks like the number one back right now. It just seems situationally you're going to put in DL News on third down. Maybe Wayne Gallman on another, you know, snap. Maybe to get rest for uh, Devonta Freeman. And I'm going to get into that right now. So, a lot of Giants fans this week. And obviously the Jets released Le'Veon Bell. He's now with the Chiefs. But everyone was talking, oh, they should bring Le'Veon Bell to the Giants. So, I'm going to 
disagree again with my friend Vincent Rapasardi. And he said, look, um, Giants fans are complaining. Uh, Daniel's bad. Daniel Jones. Daniel's bad. You know, he's not getting the support. Or, you know, it's either you're on one side of the aisle or the other. Good point. Um, and then he said, look, the Giants should go get Le'Veon Bell. And, you know, Devonta Freeman is last among, like, rushing yards expected or something. Look, do I think Devonta Freeman is the best running back in the league? No. Do I think that he's a shell of what he used to be? Yes. You know, he still moves and grooves, but, again, he's not 2016 Devonta Freeman. Um, therefore, with Le'Veon Bell, why would you sign him to a veteran minimum deal? You know, the Chiefs did that, probably. And, you know, it's just like, your team is building for the future, and they will be competing next year or the year after, depending on the GM situation. And then you have Saquon Barkley already, and whoever else is going to be in that backfield, so why are you signing Bell? That's just my view of it. And personally, excuse my language here, I don't give a fuck what a computer spits out and tells me what's expected out of Devonta Freeman. Uh, this is why I don't pay attention to the analytic analytics. You know, a passer rating, that's one thing. Uh, let's see, completion percentage. You know, that's more of non-analytic, in my opinion, at least, because, you know, it's kind of math more than it's just, you know, everything combined. Uh, another one, air yards. That's obviously going along with film, too, at least when you're looking at a cornerback. And I'm talking cornerback even though I'm talking running back running back, but, you know, there's all these, you know, nuance analytics, you know, uh, expected yards and completion, uh, turnover worthy play, also, uh, expected completion percentage, expected yards per carry, look, just because a computer expects something, or a computer program to expect something, doesn't mean I have to follow by it, and I know a lot of Giants fans follow by that, good for you, that supports your narrative, because analytics wasn't just meant to, in my opinion, you know, it wasn't meant to be followed. Uh, it wasn't just meant to be followed. It was meant to support someone's narrative to why something's going right or wrong. And in my opinion, that Devonta Freeman thing, you know, with the 3.1 expected yards per carry or something like that last in the league, look, that doesn't support my narrative. Yes, I know, and I may sound biased. But you have to look at the eye test and say, look, Hey, Devonta Freeman, he's getting more yards than the offensive line is giving him sometimes. So this is why I don't get that narrative of, oh, uh, you know, you always got to look at the analytics for stuff. I've said this a million times and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it a million one times. You need to look at film. You need to look at analytics both. Look at film uh, without stats sometimes, but a lot of the times with analytics, you have to look at the film. That's my view on it because that goes back to the Nate Solder thing, and I'm not going to discuss it again because I already did in this video, I believe. But, you know, that goes back to that. Yeah, Nate Solder gave up 57 pressures and 11 sacks, but it said that he had the pass block win rate of Jason Peters and Tyron Smith. You have to adjust your play when you're a left tackle. I'm sorry. You know, Andrew Thomas needs to perform better, and Nate Solder needed to perform better in his time. I'm not saying all of the sacks were his fault, because Daniel Jones' his pocket awareness, you know, it hasn't been the greatest in his career so far. But you need to adjust. Look at the game sensitivity. You know, look how his sack impacted the game. Look at the one sack, Eli Manning. You know, he was in the pocket. Uh, Nate Solder, the first uh, play, and then there was a second play. The first play was a failed flea flicker because the defender was literally in Eli's face. He had to dump it off to Barkley for negative three yards. And then you look at the next play, he gets totally sacked. The rusher, or Manning, I forget who, landed on Zeitler's ankle, I believe it was. And Zeitler was out for two games. Nick Gates played right guard. So, you know, is this, you know, is this uncommon? You know, that people fight about analytics and film all the time? No, it's not. Because, you know, you have those fans who watch it through the film and then the analytic fans. But you, in my opinion, have to see it from both viewpoints. But, again, to close out this episode... I don't feel like that I need to listen to some fucking computer based on what they expect for Devonta Freeman. I think the eye test certainly supports that. I'll look at yards per carry later. I'll look at, you know, average and, you know, that stuff. I'll look at that later, the real stats, not the analytics. Okay, so that's the end of the episode, everybody. Thank you guys for supporting. Um, 
I'm sorry I haven't gotten episode 51 out yet. Sportscasters being, you know, I haven't really uh, gotten an answer from Peter from Sportscaster, which is unfortunate because I want to get that episode out. Um, the episode before that was on Sportscaster. The episode after that was on Sportscaster. So um, I'll see when I do a Sportscaster thing again. If I want to, uh, you know, possibly go on Sportscaster again, I'm probably doing pregame actually. Uh, we play at one o'clock, so I'm probably doing like a 12:30 pregame, you know, Q and A that stuff because I get a lot more views on there than I do on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, even though you know I just use it for podcast episodes mainly now. Uh, our podcast available on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Overcast, and Castbox, and then follow our social media pages, Twitter and Instagram, most notably Twitter, for updates and everything else at Big Blue in the Bronx. Thank you guys. If you guys want to join Sportscaster on Sunday around 12, 15, 12, 30, I'll be there. I'll be on the account. Ask me questions. Talk about the game pregame. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you on Sunday.